Today, we're gonna go beyond the scale. Now, when it comes time to gauging our fitness progress, many of us solely rely on the number that appears on the scale. However, weight alone does not provide a comprehensive picture of our overall health and our fitness level, much less does it determine all the hard work that you've put in. So incorporating regular self-fitness tests into your routine can offer valuable insights beyond just body weight measurements. So in today's post, we're gonna explore the benefits of administering a self-fitness test every three months and introducing three self-fitness tests that you can do on your own. Time sprints, you can do a step test, and you can do a treadmill test. So why should we administer a self-fitness test? Well, stepping on the scale can be demotivating, and especially when we don't see the desired changes. So self-fitness tests offer a broader perspective by focusing on various aspects of fitness, such as your cardio level, your muscular strength, and even your agility. Now these tests provide tangible measurements of progress, helping us stay motivated and track improvements in our overall fitness level. Now I love this one, which is a time sprint. And if you have a local track near you, then it's gonna be one of the most effective fitness tests involving your cardio output, plus your speed, plus it's gonna be able to track your progression over time. So my recommendation is to use either a 100 meter, which is more of a short burst measurement, or you can use the 400 meter, which is one full lap around the track. But before you do so, make sure that you warm up properly, then you're gonna sprint the chosen distance as fast as possible while you're going to time yourself. The second one is called a step test. Now this is actually a measuring tool that they use for military. They also use it for old school fitness evaluations. And you're basically going to set up a timer for three minutes. Now all you need is the stairs at home and all you're gonna do is go up one stair and then you're gonna go back down. Every time you go up one stair and you go back down, that's one. Now you can either count yourself or you go one, two, three and just keep going for three minutes or you can have somebody sit there like your kid and count how many times you go up one stair and back one stair. Now you can actually go online and you can see and compare yourself to others your age, your gender and see how many times they did the step test in three minutes. And the last test, if you have accessibility to a treadmill, is a treadmill test. Now what you can do is set a timer for five minutes. And in that five minutes, you wanna start running or walking or whatever it is that you're capable of, and you're going to try and go as fast as you can and see the distance that you cover while you're on the treadmill for five minutes. Now this is a great test that's gonna be able to test your endurance, it's gonna be able to test your speed, and in three months from now, you're gonna be able to see how much you've improved through your cardiovascular strength, but also muscular strength, because five minutes isn't a long time. So it's more likely going to be an anaerobic burst that's gonna turn into an aerobic burst, and ultimately it's gonna be another measuring tool outside of the scale. Now when it comes to frequency and tracking your progress, I recommend that you perform these self-fitness tests every three months. So you would do the sprint, you would do the step test, and you would do the treadmill. Now you can choose to do all three, or you can just pick one that's most accessible to you and do that every three months. Now what you wanna do is have a personal log. In this log, you can have your scale measurements. I would recommend to take photos, but also have this fitness testing, put the date, and then put the date of the next one and put a reminder in your phone so that in three months, you're gonna get a seven day warning that you gotta get your fitness test done within that first week. Now by performing and comparing your results, you're gonna observe positive changes and it's gonna help you with your mindset and you're gonna be able to adjust your workouts accordingly. Remember, being in shape and working out is much more than pounds lost on the scale. All of your hours of hard work don't equate to the pounds that you've lost on the scale. In fact, what you lose has to factor in what you ate. But fitness testing is the hard work that you put into the gym daily. So I recommend that you only weigh in, track progress photos, and do fitness tests every three months so that you can actually give yourself time to create measurable results. Also, make it a rule of your thumb that if getting on the scale to measure progress is what you're going to do, that you do a fitness test. Because I don't want you just jumping on the scale because you had a bad weekend or that you had a good week. I want you jumping on that scale with intention. So if you're intentionally trying to give yourself a bad day or give yourself a boost, at least give yourself a couple different measuring tools of success so that if one isn't where you want it to be, the other could be. So there we have it guys. 
fitness testing, you got the sprint test outside at a track, you got the step test inside at the base of one of your stairs, you also have the treadmill test. Remember, progress isn't only progress through the scale. Have multiple measuring tools and build yourself up because we're all about getting 1% better every day. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to get the notifications for when DJ Cinegung uploads that next video.